Hello, hello. I am this time going to start with the screen of what I'm going to talk about with a little outline so that anybody who's watching this on replay can uh, look at this. If you want to screenshot it later on or whatever, you'll be able to have this. But this is what I'm going to be talking about today. So now I'm going to double tap. Hello. Oh, hello, hello. So, hi. Um, so we're talking tonight about slow workers and I probably said slow readers because I keep saying slow readers. Hi. Hi, Amy. And hi, Jason. And thank you for sharing. Hey, Gretchen. Um, hey, Ed. Oh, this is great. I've seen a bunch of you today seeing my post about this. So I guess those are getting out there and uh, it's good to see you. Um, let's see you. This is an expression. I guess I can't really see you, but it's good to see you. If you are um, watching this and you're relatively new to Periscope, I just want to explain what these hearts are that are coming up along the bottom. This is basically a way of sort of like liking something the way you would on Facebook. You just tap the screen and it just makes these hearts come up and Periscope keeps, tra keeps track of them. Thank you. Thanks for commenting on the chat stations. I love that too. And I love that people love it because it just makes me happy because it's exciting. Hey, Lauren. Um, anyway, so the hearts are just people just tap those when they, I guess when they really like what you're saying or something. It's just a way of like kind of giving a thumbs up. So the way that people give hearts is literally to just tap on the screen and you can tap, 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 tap all you want or you can just, you know, tap once or whatever. And you can even do it... Um, if you're watching a, a replay on Periscope later, I don't know exactly. I think you can tap the screen and give hearts. Because I've watched people's Periscopes later on and I've given them a couple of hearts. But if you're new to Periscope, that is what is going on. That's what the, the hearts are down there. Okay, so as I said last week, I am going to be using these Periscopes to answer reader questions because I can't keep up with them in my email. So the one I'm answering this week is uh, a reader wrote to me about her son. She's also a teacher. I believe she's a teacher, but her son is a is a smart kid. He is an advanced, you know, student, but he just works very slow. And she keeps uh, getting notes from his teacher saying he's a good student, but he just takes a very long time to get his work done. So this question is not necessarily about students who are struggling with their academics. This is about students who have, for whatever reason, take a long, long time to get things done. So one thing that I would love for you to do is if you've got strategies that you'd like to share in this so people can see them coming up, that's great. But I have also spoken to a lot of my own uh, friends, teacher friends and people who to, to gather up as many good strategies as I could come up with. So again, the, the first tip that I would give you is to rule out a more serious issue. So the first thing I've got listed here is um, if we've got a, like an anxiety issue. If this, if this is a student who just sort of really suffers from general anxiety and has a lot of trouble kind of getting their emotions in check in order to get things done. Um, so we want to make sure that they don't, they're not suffering from some sort of general anxiety, that there is not a learning disability where they're actually struggling with the material. Uh, you should also rule out things like eyesight issues or could be this is could just be that a kid that needs glasses or is you know really squinting at their paper and having trouble just actually reading the material for that type of a reason it could be that they've got some auditory processing issues this is this is i think i'm really speaking outside of my areas of expertise but um somewhere I believe along the autism spectrum where they have trouble processing what they're doing because of noise surrounding them and they really just need quiet in order to do their work I believe I suffer from a little bit of auditory processing because I just can't deal with noise around me. I can't concentrate. So rule out those issues first off and see if it's a, if it's a simple enough solution. But once you've done that and you, you're just dealing with a student who just takes a long time, um, here are my other suggestions that I have gathered from other people. The first suggestion is my own. It's to validate, <laughs> validate this student's thinking. If they're taking a long time because they just want to get it exactly right and and they can't let it go until it's just right, even though you see that as counterproductive, even if you see it as counterproductive, I feel like people are more willing to change their behaviors and attitudes if 
they first have them a little bit validated by you. So for example, if you're constantly saying to them, it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be perfect, just turn it in, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. They feel like you're not hearing them. You're, you're not really understanding their point of view, which is it's, quality is important to me. So if you keep telling me that quality is not important, then I am not going to change. I'm just going to keep hanging on to that attitude. So I'd say start by validating, saying, look, I understand. I want my work to be really, really good too. I can understand wanting to just double and triple check everything. However, (laughs) so you start with validating, but then move on to, however, you can only take so long. This is something that has to be done, and you could check it and check it forever, and, and never be done and never actually turn it in. And so you may want to share with them, you know, some of the knowledge that if somebody's trying too hard to be perfect, sometimes they can actually never even complete a task because they can never finish. They can never finish checking. So start by saying, I understand that you want it to be just right, but we have to cut you off at some point. So then at least they feel heard. Okay, so rule out a more serious issue. Validate their desire to create quality work. Um, The next suggestion that I got from um, several teachers is to just talk them through it. Find out exactly what it is that's holding them up. Some students may just be getting hung up on one piece of, yes, done can be better than perfect, yes. Find out, is it that you just don't understand these instructions here? Is there a certain vocabulary word? Some kids don't understand exactly what the problem is, and they just say they're stuck. So have them verbalize and get them used to trying to... um, figure out what's holding them up in the first place. So talk them through it and see if you can help figure out what's what's getting them stuck, if they are actually stuck. Then the next set of strategies, I would say it would be to start strategizing with the student. So instead of you sort of leaning over them saying, you need to hurry, you need to get this done, really join with them as a partner in this in this project of, Look, if you are not able to get your work in on time because you want it to be so perfect, that's going to just keep giving you problems. So let's try a couple of different ways to help you get your work in a little bit in a little bit more quickly. So instead of it being something that you're demanding from them, make it a partnership with them. And and we're going to try a few different things and you tell me which thing is going to work. You may even want to start by asking them, "What do you think is going to help you to be quicker?" And a lot of times kids know. They'll say, if you do this, I will be faster. So here are some strategies that you can try with them. One would be to set a timer to say, okay, how long do you think it's going to take you to get this this thing done? And the two of you can guess. And you can say, look, I've seen other kids doing this all day today. Some of them have taken 10 minutes and some have taken like 15. How long do you think? And they may say, oh, maybe 20. Okay, we're going to set a timer. We're going to keep an eye on it. For some kids, that will work. Just having that timer going will help them to kind of like keep on track. For others, it might produce even more anxiety. So again, what is going to work for this individual, individual child? If a timer doesn't work, you can, another teacher I I, um, spoke to, she said that for like, if she's got like an open response type of question that maybe has like three or four types of questions, she will just write in there estimated time that each one of these should take you. And she said for some kids that has actually worked. When they see this question should take you about five minutes. This question should take you about seven. It at least gives them some idea if they are going to be completely way off or not. So provide some estimated times for certain activities. Or even if it's a project that they're doing in class, you can say this should take you about 30 minutes. I'm going to give you a warning when there's five minutes left. If you're way, way off at that point, you need to start figuring out a way to, you know, finish up and get through it. So giving giving them a greater awareness of time in general can help. Okay, here's another strategy. This for me is a writing strategy. And I think for a lot of kids, this slow problem happens when it's a writing type of a thing. Um, I'm going to give you the initials. And, and I'm going to show you this thing again at the end so that you can look at it. This is um, W-I-R-M-I. We're me. I learned this in college. It stands for what I really mean is. The we're me strategy, I learned this in a a writing textbook. It's when you're stuck writing, just say out loud, okay, what I really mean is blah, 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 and and act as if you're talking to somebody and literally write down the words, what I really mean is, and write what you really mean. That phrasing, however you just put it, is probably pretty darn close to how you could say it in a revision later. So along with that, 
show students how you do that, especially if you're trying to teach them how to ever write something down, you have got to model that for them. You've got to model for them how to write crappy early drafts of things. Any of you who have read Anne Lamott know how she puts that, but I'm going to just say crappy first drafts. Show them how you actually do that. Compose in front of them and show them how you, you spell incorrectly and how you just get it all down on paper. So demonstrating uh, sloppy first drafts for students can help them see, oh, I don't have to say it perfectly the first time. I can just get it out there and then fix it up later. So showing them those types of strategies, like the we're me strategy, what I really mean is, or even things that aren't called that, just getting it out the way you would talk it is a way of just getting it out. Thanks, Gretchen. <laughs> so, okay, I have another, another teacher gave me this strategy. They said, set a specific goal for just a portion of the task. So suppose you've got a student who's got a, a, a project and you know it's going to take them forever. Say to them, okay, by the end of this class period or five minutes before, you need to at least have section A done and show it to me. So that then you can actually informally assess where they are at that point and see, okay, are they getting it? Are they at least on track? Is it just taking them a while, but are they on track? Then, then, you, then you at least have something accomplished before they, they take off with it. A lot of teachers I spoke to said they just let the students take the work home and finish it. As long as they've been working productively, they just go ahead and do that. Uh, great, Lauren, great suggestion. Sometimes to-do lists are golden when we have lots to do. So breaking a task up into smaller subtasks so that they can check things off, that's fantastic. I think that's a great idea. I didn't even have that on my list, so thank you for, for contributing that. Um, another teacher suggested that you mix up, um, make sure that you're offering students a mix of high stakes tasks and low stakes tasks. So the example she gave me was, you know, an essay that has to be written and revised and polished versus something like a free write where you say to kids, you've got five minutes, and you're going to scribble down every thought you have and you have to turn it in so that they can start to at least uh, – Use those muscles a little bit to, to practice the low stakes, easy, it, this doesn't really matter, I'm just practicing type of activity. It may be that this student who's super perfectionistic doesn't have enough practice in the real loose kind of relaxed type of writing. And, and the more practice they get, the better they may get at that kind of work. Um, that's all I have. I've got model your own process, but I talked about that a little bit. Um, and just show kids how to just let certain decisions go. When you're modeling for them, just show, to th show them, look, I spelled that word wrong. I'm going to leave it. I'll get back to it later. They may never have been exposed to a person who has that attitude. It could be that this kid comes from a family where everything always has to be very, very precise all the time. And so this is one of the things I love about being a teacher is that you're giving them exposure to different types of adults. You are you might be a different kind of adult that they've never seen before. And it's like, oh, look at this person. They don't even care how they spell the first time around, but they're going to go back and fix it later. So that is what I've got for you today. I'm going to flip the camera around and show you this list one more time so that if you wanted to keep track. Oh, I try, I try and do a must do and a can do. All right, I'm going to read these comments later because these are all really, really good ideas. Let me flip the camera around and show you this list one more time so that if you wanted to screenshot it or something, you could. All right. Focus. Okay. We'll just show that one more time. Oh, I just saw a camera icon fly up. That was cool. Okay. So... And I'm going to model my own advice, and I'm going to count down. Oh, I see you guys are all taking pictures. I need to hold this up then. Okay. In five, four, three, two, and one. I'm flipping it back around. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for coming. I'm going to try to do this again next Tuesday night, and we'll see how it goes. And until then, you all have a great week, and uh, thank you so much.